intro to ultraviolet and comparing some UV sources. Really what we wanted to talk about in this video are a couple of the long wave ultraviolet flashlights that we've recently purchased and show uh, the difference in quality for money um, and compare them and give you some idea of what to look for if you're thinking about making those types of purchases. What we're looking at here in the uh, background are uh, some minerals, geodes, crystals, shells, um, different things that uh, we've collected on our trips um, that are uh, fluorescent. Some of them are phosphorescent as well. So fluorescence is absorbing a short wave, uh, wavelength of light, and re-emitting it as a long wave. Um, phosphorescence is absorbing um, light and then re-emitting it after the light source has been uh, extinguished. Other minerals possess uh, thermbolescence, which is using heat. Uh, when they're heated, they release light. Or trembolescence, like quartz, and that's uh, when you break the quartz or you put a lot of pressure on it, it will uh, discharge an electric charge that's visible. So here are some of the, uh, the minerals that we have. We're using the Convoy S2 as a spotlight. Um, typically, there's just a fluorescent bulb over the top of these that's real cheap from Walmart. What we see here is willerite, calcite, um, zincite. These are some ores that have uh, some mixed um, things that will respond to fluorescence that we that we collected ourselves from uh, Sterling Hill Minerals uh, Museum. There, there's a little collection spot there. I'll put the link right below here for, uh, for that trip. But here are the two flashlights that we want to look at. And the larger one is the KMASH 100 LED UV black, flash, black light flashlight. Um, you can see there's a lot of, of LEDs there. And uh, we're going to compare that to the Convoy S2 Plus with a 365 nanometer Nike UV LED. This flashlight is waterproof and ran about $20. I have since seen them on eBay um, for $12. Uh, that flashlight, uh, we bought it at Gear Best, but one of the other things we're going to look at, it runs on an 18650 uh, rechargeable lithium battery um, that you can ha usually have to purchase separate and of course buy the recharger with it, so a little bit more of an investment there, but I think you'll see here in a minute, um, I'd go with the smaller. Here's a piece of equipment that we're going to use that's going to help show the difference. Now this is a Hoya uh, short pass uh, UV filter. It, uh, it's a U340. It's a piece of filter glass and it's going to block all wavelengths other than that, that UV. So here's the K-Mash and you can see there's a whole lot of white light and purple light, not just UV. And it is totally washing out any UV that this flashlight actually makes. So I'm going to put the filter glass over it and it'll stop probably 90% of or more of the the white light still getting some purple coming through there not a not a real big um, reaction um, with fluorescence and that's because that light just doesn't produce a whole lot of UV okay here's the convoy and I don't have the filter glass on here but you can see a little bit of green in the one specimen and some pinks and some purples blues you can see the lint all over the black cloth uh, is really lighting up too. A lot more UV being produced by this little light. It has a, an LED that looks like a Cree light bulb inside. A um, whole lot better quality. And when we use the, uh, the filter glass on this one, and it's going to knock out even more of the white light and it allows a lot of the, the UV to have an even stronger stronger reaction. So the light is weaker but the reaction is much better. Now the Hoya uh, filter glass runs about $59. Definitely not worth buying unless you're going to take some UV pictures and have a camera that that'll fit as well. Here's zincite, frankite, willamite, calcite. Again from the Franklin uh, Museum. That's under short wave. This is under long wave. We have a short wave lamp they run about $200 or more. Here's shortwave. Franklinite calcite. Again, shortwave. So you get a lot more reaction in, in these specimens with the shortwave than you do with the long wave. But the long wave is a, a lot more cost effective. That last specimen, that was really the color. I'm not enhancing these at all. 
when you do the still photos, uh, you've got to make sure you don't touch the tripod or the table because it does wiggle them just a bit.